Hello, my name is Peter Chalmers, and this is my video on arthroscopic double row rotator cuff repair. For me, this procedure is formed in the beach chair position. We're going to start with our arthroscopy here in the subacromial space. You can see our tendon edge right there that I'm manipulating with the spinal needle. You can see it's quite medialized here, but we have pretty robust tendon tissue. We're going to need to bring that all the way back to our tuberosity. So first, I make sure the spinal needle is going to be able to exactly get where I need to get, and then we begin our bursectomy. You want to be careful here to remove all the bursa because we're going to need that out of our, out of our way for later in the procedure. So I really make sure I remove all of this posterior lateral stuff, again, because we're probably going to do a double row repair here. Remove all that posterior lateral bursa. Make sure that we've got all of the frayed edges on the tendon removed. Make sure we've got plenty of leeway above the tendon. This tendon comes all the way back down, and I can see that looks like it's going to come nicely into that run little spot there. We're going to debride the tuberosity here and make sure we've got plenty of fresh healing on the osseous surface. Um, and then, once again, make sure that going in the right spot. And what I do here is look at the medial aspect of the footprint and make a mark in the tendon to see exactly where I'm going to want my sutures to pass. We'll place our anchors here for our double repair. These anchors are coming in right off the acromial surface right here at the medial aspect of the footprint. Um, and um, these are triple loaded anchors. I think if you can get more suture spans, more sutures going through your tendon repair, that's better generally. Um, so um, just like every other tendon repair in the body, more sutures across leads to a more stable fixation. So this is going to be a total of 12 sutures with two anchors that are both triple loaded for six suture strands total for each anchor. So I use this suture passer. I think you can pass however you'd like. This one is particularly efficient for me. We find that burn mark. And then I'll bring the sutures out through the anterior lateral portal as I go. This is a particularly efficient way of doing it because as you go, um, what happens is that the sutures get passed kind of out of your way. As you go, you make sure there's not going to be any opportunity for the sutures themselves to get tangled up. Um, so as I do this, there's only one suture coming through the cannula at any one time. And I really only use one cannula. That's all the sutures passed now. And you can see that they're completely evenly spread throughout. Now I'm going to grasp the sutures from back to front out the lateral cannula, so passing from front to back, tying from back to front. Um, and you can see as I pull those, it brings the tendon nicely over. So here's the first one tied. I think it doesn't, don't think it matters what knot you use. I tend to use stacked half inches because I think they're more controlled. So we'll tie those one by one, make sure that brings the tendon all the way over. And um, I usually cut one of these each so we can bring one suture strand from each into our lateral row anchor. This allows me to use just one anchor laterally instead of two. That saves a fair amount of money for the patient. So you can see once those are all tied, the tendon is completely covering the footprint, and now I can bring the sutures into my lateral row anchor um, and get those all compressed. So we grasp those out the lateral row um, one by one, and um, once those are all grasped, then we'll use the cannula to see what it's going to look like depending on where I place it. That's going to look pretty good if I go there. So that gets me a preliminary, preliminary idea of, of whether or not that's going to be an appropriate position for our lateral row anchor. We'll tap for that anchor and then um, place the anchor itself. Um, here's the anchor going in. And um, as we do this, I might do a little bit of fine tuning with the probe here to make sure that I've got maximum spread on my sutures, make sure the compression is even, evenly applied across the tendon surface. Um, and um, again, the probe allows you to fine tune that as you go, bring the probe out once we're pulling that down, and you can see how that brings, makes it sure there's no dog ears whatsoever. The tendon's nicely compressed against the footprint, and I think that looks pretty good here from the, um, from the bursal side. We'll insert our anchor and cut the sutures, and um, take one final look, make sure it looks okay, and then I'll also often look on the articular side. This can be a double check to make sure you've brought the tendon all the way to the articular portion. You can see here, anchor's not quite in or far enough. I'll put it in a little bit more. I always double check this. You don't want your anchor to be sticking out at all as that can cause subacromial impingement kind of symptoms. Cut our sutures here again and then we're done. So here's a final view of our repair. Again, nice compression all the way across. Uh, maximum suture strains across the repair, minimum number of anchors for minimum cost and maximum fixation. So that's a benefit here. And then looking from the articular side, you can see the tendon comes perfectly down to the um, articular margin. So that's a pretty good looking cuff to cuff repair, and this will lead to a healed repair and a happy patient. Thank you. Bye.